Welcome to the second game of the MST Clash Bash League Finals between Theo and Oryx. If you haven't seen the first game, you got to go check that out right now. I'm William Table and Legs, and I'm here with Kevin Ke Smurf Murphy. Kevin, what's up? What's up? Kevin, Theo won the Icelander Mirror and only needs one win right here on Ira to close out the series mm -hmm. and be the Clash Bash champion. What does Oryx, who's running back the Icelander, need to do to tie up the series into Theo's Ira? Uh, so Oryx here really is looking to kind of disrupt the standard value turns that Ira loves. Um, Ira loves just getting her hero ability every single turn. It's how she's uh, super. How she kind of goes above rate and gets to play super efficient hands. Um, Rx on Icelander wants to mess with that math just a little bit. Uh, Iris turns are very uh, Kadachi Kadachi one cost or Kadachi two cost, uh, and Rx needs to try or and mess Kadachi with that. Kadachi Razor Reflex two cost. Razor Reflex, yeah. Uh, oh my gosh. Yeah, floating one for the frostbite. Like, just everything is perfectly curved here. The cut down to size is pretty relevant. It is mildly relevant. You give a card, and that's all it asks. So you still get your three value, and it's fine. But uh, Icelander had to take a lot of damage for it. The sigil on turn zero for Theo was really big. Scar gets to be online. <laughs> yes, uh, when you're at nine to twenty-three, Scar is yep. online. And Wounded Bull's online. Wow, and they Wounded are is online. Haymaker in each other. Holy frick. Yep. Um, so we're gonna get uh, a two-card block here. This makes sense. Um, that's kind of the best use of these cards. We want to keep our life total high, give us room to pressure Icelander's life total back later. Um and we see the we'll, second sigil. Yes. Yep, the second sigil's ready to go in Arsenal can play, be played in response to any Icelander trigger. Um, and Rx blocking uh, the two on the second Kadachi, but there's no one cost behind it. I still think it's correct. If there's a one cost behind it, it's very efficient. Uh, just unfortunately not in uh, this case. I want to give a huge shout Arx, out to it. Yeah. Rx, again, sitting on this arsenal for multiple turns. Did something similar in the last game. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if they put uh, an awkward... Last time it seemed like they, what did they put in there? I already forgot. Um, I oh, they have a sigil. Sigils everywhere. Uh, I was yep. going to give a big shout out to everybody watching. Thank you so much for tuning into the Clash Bash League, especially Gordon. Special yeah. guest appearance. Yeah, we'll hear him in the background maybe as he yells at me. Ooh, here we go. Yellow Ice Fan. Yellow Ice Fane, four arcane damage, uh, three arcane barrier on Ira. Yep. This is interesting. So we're gonna we're gonna AB one, and then we're gonna pay two for the effect of Ice Fane. Two from Waning Moon is gonna come in, uh, with the Ice Bolt that we fused with. We're not gonna AB any of that. We're gonna keep some uh some damage here, and we're gonna do we're gonna kind of set up our lethal turn. It looks like, uh, Kadachi Kadachi Snatch. A pretty good turn. It plays around one frostbite, which we can reasonably assume that they have since they fused with an ice card. Uh, they'll probably show us that. I, have, I imagine they're going to be showing us that ice card here if they're paying into Ironhide legs. They're also then going to send whatever spell is out of their arsenal. Uh, Snatch will get played. Even if it's blocked, we don't mind too much. Plunder Run is going to uh, end up in arsenal and set up for the turn that's going to pressure the Icelander out of the game. I have an interesting question. So last game, Rx playing Icelander brought in Goliath Gauntlet into the mirror, whereas Theo mm -hmm. had a uh, Conduit of Frostburn as his arms yes. equipment. But it looks like Rx did actually have Conduit of Frostburn in the yep. cyborg because they brought it into the Ira matchup right now. Yep. So they they brought it into the Ira matchup to combo with Glacial Horn, where they're okay. trying to uh, Glacial Horn will freeze the card in Arsenal. And then Conduit of Frostburn says it's going to blow up when I sense. send an Aether Ice Fiend that you can't stop. Um, the Glacial Horns was popped and the Sigil was played in response so it couldn't be frozen and then couldn't be destroyed by Conduit. Uh, wow. Which is why well, the Sigil I... was played out when it was. Yeah. Ooh, this Hardened Cross Strap is risky. Ooh. Oh. That's, that's not good. Oh, pitch the card. Oh, we're <laughs> oh, getting no. one value out of our Cross Strap. Oh, that was a risk. 
That's that's rough. Okay, it's wow. not. It is not the end of the game. We're going to twelve, and that's a lot of tempo for Icelander. Oof. Oh, blue even bigger okay. than that. Blue even bigger than that when there's a physical attack. That doesn't block Ooh. very well. Now do it. <laughs> it sure doesn't. Uh, so back to Frostburn. It has Quell, which actually does, I guess, come up in this matchup. If Ira gets to do the Kadachi Kadachi yeah. something, uh, one card equals three value, especially if it's like a blue that would typically block for two, right? Yeah, um, if it's a blue that would block for two, but you also get to space it out over three yeah. sources, so you still get like a full three block out of it. Um, that was a very common thing to do oh. in uh uprising limited yeah that's interesting they um, played the cool. plunder run for only bittering thorns though well, it is coming plunder, in for eight but it like it comes in know. for eight because it has the plus three and the plus one from ira so if this hits they're getting something else and we've got like th this this eight is enough like just playing it okay. on the bittering thorns alone is enough okay because I was going to um, say, is you know, wouldn't you want to save it for a wider turn where you are guaranteed to probably get the hit? But yes, usually, usually. But if there is an extra card here in this scenario, which also there's a card in hand already. If there is an extra card drawn here, that can just by itself be presenting lethal, like beyond just the eight here, which is presenting lethal. I assume we're going to get at least one card out of hand. But blocking for blocking eight is a massive amount of tempo lost. But only Ooh. blocking three, going Ooh, to three with an ice vein. Yeah, that's oh, oh you so don't want this. Another red, <laughs> yeah, we probably have another red card in hand. But this is an extra card that Ira gets to play with. This is this is very good for. This is a very good spot for Ira, even after losing the like all of Heart and Cross Trap and having just pitch. Oh, OK. Oh, are we going to quell? Are we going to quell for the last point here? If you don't. I mean, I, I think about it this way, like drawing a whole card on average, a card's value is what? Or three. This quell is like a one resource for three value. We're going to spell fire for it. Activate Spellfire. Yeah. And spend that on Frostburn. Yep. That's a, that's actually. So. That's pretty decent and value and keeps cards in hand. Oh, no, they did pitch. Okay. Like, pitch we're, normally so we're going to give a we're going to give a card. <gasps> oh, this even bigger than that is so interesting. It's only opt one because it's a blue. But basically, and, and we this is a very. So Theo has a we very hit with Kadachi. Yes, he dealt one with the Kadachi. But Theo is a very so, aggressive Ira list. Yeah, so opt one and then reveal the top card of your deck if its value is attack value is greater than the damage you've dealt this turn, which the damage he's dealt yep. is one. Uh, he gets to draw a card and something else. So he reveals wow. the card, it gets put into his hand, and he makes a quicken. And makes it he quicker, gets a yes. free one for four off of that even bigger than that. And if it is, it's Crouching Tiger, which yes, which doesn't he can matter, then put. But he, it no, it matters. He gets to put that tiger. Oh, we can put it in oh, arsenal. It's in, it's in banish. It's in banish. Oh, this, okay. Uh, regular ninja cards put it in banish. The Mystic Ninja ones put it in hand. You're um, right. So the tiger does not end up mattering. However, I believe Plunder Run is still active. Plunder Run. Didn't trigger because the eight was blocked out. Oh my gosh. Yes. They're going to get to draw another card. This has go they again. Are. But Ira's oh also my at gosh. one now. But Icelanders. Yeah, but also... what if they kill him right now? <gasps> another flex clause. It can't be played. Oh my gosh. We don't have the resources for it. So we're going to put uh, it in Arsenal. Icelander, if Icelander can survive, they have no Arsenal, turn, they have no cards in hand. Yep. So they can't they have to do anything survive at turn. Oh, this is such a good hand for Ira, though. They have leg tap into rising knee thrust. The natural Naturally. combo. Oh, my gosh. And Icelander can't do anything. 
And that between the two only costs one. They also have a torrent of tempo, so you could do rising knee thrust into torrent to tempo. Ira gives the couch, crouching tiger plus one. Uh, yeah, just one that's like you oh just can't block. God. It is just oh. this is just lining up, so it's, it's going to be clean. four into four into five. I think we. That's this is it, right? No, five. four into five. Oh, it's it's plus three, yes, or plus yeah, two. That's going to be that's going to be it. Wow. Yep. The Holy Agro frick! Ira Agro Ira. That was a that was an insanely good draw oh, for Ira. Wow, <laughs> that was insane. <laughs> that hand was like perfect, but also like the the e- hand exactly, before it was really good. Exactly, even bigger than that. Bottoming the blue zero for one that you can't draw off the even bigger than that because it's not greater than the damage you've dealt. Hits the flex clause. Flex clause gets to go into arsenal as a one for four guaranteed. And you can guarantee go like one, two, four, plus whatever you plus three other cards you draw and hits natural leg tap into rising knee thrust. That's insane. That was that's that was crazy. Yeah. And we have our MST Clash Bash champion, Kevin, looking back on this series as a whole. These are mm. the most dominant decks in the meta. A- mm-hmm. And in the final match of this league, how, do you think they lived up to the hype? I, I think we definitely like saw kind of the potential of these decks, like especially like a slightly more aggressively slanted uh, aggro Ira deck who can always present the value that she wants every turn. Um, Theo didn't go for like rainbow flick flax or anything like that. It was just solid. I'm going to do the one, two, five every turn with just a little bit of upside. Um, I've got AB3. I've got Heart and Cross Trap. Just good, solid value equipment for that matchup. We didn't see the sideboard, the other half of the sideboard equipment, but it was just good, consistent value there. Um, and Icelander is still just like one of the most efficient heroes that's ever been printed. Uh, just getting a free action point every turn is so good, especially when some of your blues are as efficient as hers are. Cold Snap, Polar Blast, uh, Aether Hail, yeah. Meredith Scolding, Frostbite's also being an absolute menace for some decks who are like super tightly cost curved. A single Frostbite can cost them an entire card, as we saw in this yeah. uh, series. Yeah. We saw um, it turned a Wounded Bull from a two-card seven into a three-card seven. Like, That's a big from deal. a single Frostbite. Um, so uh, th- these decks are just built for efficiency. And when you have like slightly lower, lower power formats like this, where you don't have all the majestics, you don't have the legendaries, that efficiency really shines. It's, it's really impressive. And I think the players today also played incredibly well. We saw some actually insane plays from a format mm-hmm. that, yeah, is a little less power, a little underpowered compared to others, right? Uh, so thank you all so much for watching the MSD Clash Bash League. We were William and Kevin from Pit Against, the Table Pits Live Flesh and Blood call show. We want to give a big shout out to everyone behind the scenes who ran the league and edits and distributes the games and to all the players. Uh, if yeah. you want to join, yeah, if you want to join the Rosetta Clash Bash League, go check out Bold Brew Games Discord. And thank you again so much for watching. Bye. Peace.